When I find my golden times of trouble, friends and colleagues uh, Hello everyone, uh, my name is Margarita Manterola uh, and I will talk about a little bit about code reviews and how code reviews are done at Google. Um, I hope you find it interesting. <laughs> uh, a little bit about me. I am from Argentina. I've been living in Germany for the past eight months. Uh, I'm an electric engineer, or actually electronic, but that I don't think that exists here, or usually. Um, but I've been working as a software developer for the past more than 10 years. Uh, so I studied electronics, but I've worked like basically all my work life as a software developer. I, I've been a very active contributor in the free software movement, particularly in the Debian project. How many of you know what Debian is? Please raise your hands. Okay. Um, well, I'm currently working in Unix for Google, in the Ubuntu team. So, how many of you know what Ubuntu is? Please raise your hands. Okay, a little bit more, although not everybody. So, Ubuntu is the internal Google version of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a Linux distribution which is based on Debian. So, it's like indirectly I'm working for a Debian distribution, but it's which is based on Ubuntu, based on Debian. Uh, Ubuntu is uh, very much like Ubuntu, so it's not very different. It's basically Ubuntu with some extra tools that we add in order to manage the complexity of a company like Google. But it's basically Ubuntu. We have all the problems that Ubuntu users have. And we try to fix them, and then if we get to fix them, it gets fixed in Ubuntu, so any Ubuntu user will get the same fix. Um, what makes it special is that we, like, we have many machines and we want them to always be upgraded, so we have tools that keep them upgraded all the time and apply bug fixes and, uh, I don't know, make sure that if there's a problem that doesn't allow the upgrade to happen, that this gets reported so that we can fix it, stuff like that. Now, nothing very special, just internal configuration. Um, well, what I do as part of the Ubuntu team mainly is fix bugs, so users report bugs like if I have two monitors and I use GNOME and open whatever program, Chrome in one monitor and another program in the other, something bad happens. So, bugs like that. So I, I, I try to reproduce the problem, Diane knows where the cause of that problem is, uh, report it upstream or find it upstream. Most of the bugs that we found have already been found by someone else, it's not by we are so original. <laughs> and then try to get it fixed. Uh, and well, also apart from that, I also like develop some internal tools like configuration wizards or internal notification programs um, for like internal stuff. Uh, well, but my talk is about code reviews. All that was about me, so that you know where I come from. But the talk is about code reviews. So. How many of you know what code reviews are? Please raise your hands. Okay. How many of you have used code reviews? <laughs> okay, well, pretty much the same, that knew what, it, what they were. So the Wikipedia definition of what code reviews are is a tool used among software developers to improve the quality of code and the developer skills. And I found this definition pretty accurate. So it's not only about the quality of the code, but it's also about improving the developers, right? So if you do code reviews really well, you will get better code with less bugs, with fewer bugs. Uh, but you will also learn from it, like both the developers that are writing the code and the developers that are reviewing the code will both learn from the experience because you get to see someone else's point of view. So, uh, 
That's like the, the whole idea of doing code reviews. What's the problem with code reviews? Uh, depending on of how you do it, if you do it wrong, it might take a lot of time. So I've been watching some, some free software projects that use code reviews in Bitbucket or stuff. And yeah, someone sends a pull request and six months later they get a saying, yeah, you should do this differently. And then this person has to like upgrade all their code to whatever change in the code base during those six months. And then they do that, they do that, they do that differently and then they have to wait who knows how many more months to get the code review, right? So if you do it that way, it doesn't work. It has to be prompt. It has to be right there. You, you send the pull request or the code review request or whatever way you have it structured and you get the code review the next day or the next next day. But it can be six months. If it's six months, then it doesn't work. Then the other thing is it requires additional infrastructure. If you are just working like if it's a small team of five people or whatever and you just have like a Git repository where you both, you all five people push code, you will need an extra program to do code reviews and you say, okay, maybe it's not worth it because I have to add all these other tools or whatever. But you have to keep in mind that the advantages outweigh the, it requires additional infrastructure. It's true, but there are many alternatives that you can use. And well, then, the last one is not every good programmer is a good reviewer. You have to learn how to be a good reviewer. It's not always easy to give good feedback. It's also not always easy to receive the feedback, right? If someone tells you your code is all wrong, you have to do it. You have to start again. Yeah, well, uh, but uh, it's like a learning experience that you get with time. So. And then there's the last thing, like people might say, I'm, I'm too good of a programmer, I don't need code reviews. Why would I do code reviews if I don't have bugs? Right? So, yeah, we have to remember that there are always bugs, like even with uh, space stuff that are very well tested, they have bugs. Like, this is an explosion of uh, a rocket, one of the worst bugs, software bugs in history. Like, uh, when I think, when I feel that I'm getting too proud of my software, I go to the list of the worst bugs in history, so that I remember that there always can be bugs. It doesn't matter how how high standards the software has, it can still have bugs. So there are different approaches to code reviews, and each person should choose the approach that suits them or each team should choose the approach that suits the team better. Um, the first approach, which is not strictly code reviews, but it can work as code reviews, is pair programming. So if you just type in a computer and someone else is also there looking at what you type and then you, yeah, this could be done differently, yeah. then constant feedback between the two of you. But that's not the usual way of doing code reviews. It's another way that's not the usual one. The usual one is doing it by text, by something that stays and you can look at it afterwards, right? Because if it's pair programming and just stuck, then when you think, oh, right, he had suggested that I did this and that, and you can't go back to it because it was just orally. Um, so if we take that out, uh, the old way is just sending patches by mail and people commenting on them by mail. The new way is pull requests. This is very trendy. And um, the last one, which is similar to pull requests, is approval and then submission by the person that coded. So I'm going to go a little bit into each of those. So the old style way, it's still valid, it's old because it's been used for a long time, but it doesn't mean that it's bad. Uh, it's the one that requires the less infrastructure. You can just add a commit hook to whatever version control system you're using. I remember using this with 
CVS, right? Like the prehistoric ages of version control system, and you can still you could still do this. So it's very simple. You just add a hook that whenever someone commits something, it's sent to a mailing list. And so when this mail comes, someone replies saying, "Yeah, this is great," or take into account this, or I think this is wrong, or whatever, and if it's necessary, some, this person that sent this original submission makes a fix to fix whatever was wrong. This is good because it keeps good communication for it. if everyone is subscribed to the mailing list, it means that everyone sees what's going on, um, so everyone knows what things are being committed and what comments are being made, but the problem is that if it's a big group of people, it's very likely that some things will get ignored. Because if you send a mail with a, a commit and nobody replies, what does it mean? Does it mean that everything was perfect? Or does it mean that nobody looked at it? Right? You, you will never know. So, it's... If the group is big and the number of commits is big, it, it gets out of hand because you can't really know if, if this was reviewed correctly or not. You have to develop uh, a routine of, even if the thing is perfect, just say, hey, great work or whatever, so that the other person knows that it was reviewed. Otherwise, in the end, nobody reviews anything. But it's still good, right? It has its disadvantages, but it's, it's good because it's simple. So, if you're starting a new thing and you don't think that you have the infrastructure for a big code review system, you can still do this for a while. And then if you, if you say, okay, I really need the code review system, you can move on to the bigger thing. So, the trendy thing nowadays is pull requests, right? Pull Raise your hands, who knows what a pull request is? Okay. Um, so, for the ones that don't know, pull request is something that currently is very trendy in Bitbucket and GitHub, and it's done mainly with distributed version control systems like Git and Mercurial. And what it means is that someone makes a fork of a project, they work there, and when they have all the commits that they want to merge back to the main project, they create a pull request, and the person that has the power of uh, committing stuff in the main project may pull this code into the main project. So, one person creates the patch, and the other one is the one that pulls it in, right? So, it's like the creator and the puller. Um, so, it allows a lot of control in the person that is the one that has the control of the, of the main branch of the software to decide what we'll see and what doesn't. As the project grows, there are more people that have this power because otherwise it's impossible to grow. So, all these people have to have the responsibility of uh, pulling the stuff that is uh, um, requested to be pulled. Um, the, well, the disadvantage is that it requires the pullers to develop a certain workflow. So I've attended a couple of talks from different kernel, Linux kernel developers. So the Linux kernel uses pull requests, although not GitHub, but they use the pull request system and they each kernel maintainer has developed their own workflow to deal with this because it's like even if you have all the pull requests ordered in a list or whatever it's still you need to review all of them and then pull them in and pull them in in a way that doesn't break the code because you have let's say you have 10 pull requests but they are all touching the same files. So if you pull one in, then the other one might not apply. So you have to put in a lot of work to make this apply yourself. Like the pooler has to do a lot of work. So 
then it doesn't scale well. So I've, I've heard different kernel maintainers explaining how they did, dealt with this, and it always sounds like a lot of work. So that's the problem with the pull request, is that it's a lot of work for the puller. And then when, when the person that's doing it gets overworked, in the end they, they can't do their work well enough, right? They, they, it happens that the code review might be like six months not reviewed because they don't have enough time to deal with all of this. And then finally, the, this is the way that we use at Google, is uh, very similar to pull request, but the submitting part is responsibility of the one that created the change and not the one that approved it. So the, the review itself is it's almost the same as with pull requesting that you get a piece of code that you want to submit and you review it line by line, five by five, whatever way fits you best. And then when you approve it, the one that created the change is the one that has to make the submission. So it's the one that has to update any code if it, in the middle it doesn't apply anymore, right? And this makes it a scale better for the pullers. So the one that has to review doesn't have to do so much work and the work is better balanced. Um, mm. Well, the, this one can also be used with centralized systems. The pull request thing only works for distributed virtual control systems like Git and Mercurial, but this one can also be used like with subversion or stuff like that. Um, and well, right, it requires different infrastructure. So if you have a certain piece of software, like if you are using GitHub, you will most likely use the GitHub code review system which is good enough for certain projects. Uh, if you want to use a system like this, you will have to have an external infrastructure. So you might think, well, maybe that's not worth it. Or maybe, yes, it depends on the size of the project. So uh, some code review tools, there are many code review tools, it's like, like when distributed control systems suddenly were trendy and we had tens or twenties of, co of distributed control systems and then in the end Git and Mercurial kind of won the battle. They didn't win it completely because we had two, <laughs> but they almost like all the rest faded away. Now with the, with the code review systems, it's also like that. Like every year there's a new tool claiming that it's the best. <laughs> and the only way of knowing which tool is the best is to go and try them out because otherwise you, you, can't, you can't believe the website that says, oh, this code review system is better than all the others. And like all the websites say the same thing, right? So, but anyway. Some of the ones that are available, uh, the first one, Ritfeld, uh, was developed by Guido Van Rossum in Python. Uh, originally based on what was used inside Google, so he made a, uh, an open source project of what used inside Google for code reviews, and it's currently used by Chrome, Chromium and the Go language. And then, uh, so Ritfeld works with Subversion, and with Git. Um, Garrett it only works with Git and it's uh, written in Java and it's used by the Android team, by LibreOffice and like 12 or 20 other known projects and many other unknown <coughs> projects of course. Um, so uh, Bitbucket and GitHub do provide their own tools which you can't download and style, so they are not open source. But if you have your project hosted in Bitbucket and GitHub, you can use uh, the tools provided by them. So I think that for small projects, it's a good solution to just start in one of these 
places and use what they are providing. And then if the project grows so much that the lightweight infrastructure that this site offers uh, is not enough anymore, then migrate to something bigger, something with more infrastructure and that has like, more options of things to do. So how, how does it work at Google? So as I said, it's the get approval thing where the creator of the change is the one that submitted it. Uh, everything has to be reviewed at least by one person, but it might be re have to be reviewed by more people, depending on what the change is. So everyone at Google can change anything, any, any piece of code that is out there, but to get it approved, it has to be approved by someone who is in the owner's list of people. Like, if I want to fix Gmail, I will need an approval from a Gmail uh, developer, right? I, it does, it, I can't get approval from someone that's not in the owner's list. Um, and then there's this other interesting thing, which is not so... The, other, the owner's part is very much uh, understandable because in the uh, pull request world you have like the puller is the owner, right? The one that has permission to pull into the tree is the same as the owner in this case. But then there's the readability uh, part, which is to to be able to get approval for something written in Java, you need either you or your reviewer have to be approved to write code in Java. And this approval to write code in Java is called readability. And the same for any language. If I want to submit Python code, I need to have Python readability. And if I want to submit Go, I need my reviewer to have Go readability, right? So this ensures that the code written uh, is of a because uh, so I do most of my coding in Python and then go and create the change in Java and I may, yeah, okay, maybe it works, but it's probably awful because I come from a different world. So this ensures that the, it's, the code not only works, but it's also readable, right? So maybe for one change I might need one, one reviewer that is the owner of the file and one reviewer that has readability in the language. And maybe I can even ask for more reviewers because I want more opinions. So it's not like I only have the reviewers, the, the amount, the least amount of reviewers, I can also have more reviewers because feedback is good. And when, when everything is all right and the change is approved, then the one that created the change is the one that submitted, right? So, as I said, this puts the burden, it distributes the burden of the work better. So my experience with this is that it's uh, really... So a lot of people are afraid of code reviews or are bored by the first thing that I said that is that it takes a lot of time and that it takes a lot of time to get your change into the code. But if you put code reviews in as part of your work, uh, your workflow, a part of, of the thing that you have to do during your work time, then it's, it's just another thing that you have to do and as, as quickly as you do it, the better it is. So, so if you do it fast, it's not so much slow as, as if suddenly you have to, like, you don't do any code reviews for two weeks and then you have like, all this list of code that you need to review all together, it's unbearable. And uh, the way that it's done at Google is that it's really part of, of what everyone is expected to do. So it's part of your day, it's doing code reviews, and so they, they are really fast. There's never like, oh, I can't check my coding because I'm waiting for a review. That, okay, that, yeah, it happens, but usually it's one day or less than a day. So it's, it, it works. Um, for
for me, the best thing is that it's a great learning mm -hmm. experience. If I send a change and all I get is the approval, it's I'm depressed because I didn't learn anything. Uh, if I get comments, even if the comments are are not, uh, I'm not saying, oh, this is awful, you have to change everything, but the comment might say, you know what, you could do it this other way and it could maybe be more efficient, or did you think of doing it this other, this other thing? And all that makes me always keep learning. If I, if, if I just stay with what I've learned up to now and, and don't learn new things, I, I'm going to stay, right? And, and the constant interaction with other people, both as a reviewer and as a submitter, uh, make, make it like a constant learning experience of more things. You always have more things that you have to learn. You can't know everything. Um, so, yeah, so as a conclusion, uh, as I said, I think it's important that when you are evaluating what kind of code reviews you are going to do, you have to take into account the size of the project that you are participating in. It's not the same if you are a five-person project, if you are a hundred-person project, if you are a thousand-person project. It's, it's going to, be, to work in a different way. So you have to take that into account. And trying to use the workflow that is thought for a thousand people project into a five people project is going to make it fail, right? It, it won't work if it's thought for a different scale. So you have to pick the one that works for you. And um, yeah. Uh, I remember when I was starting as a software developer back in year 2000 that one of the bosses was turning off one of my companions because he wrote code too fast. And I, I was like an intern, and very new, and I was thinking, how can he be telling him off because he writes code too fast? Of course, yeah, with time I understood that the problem is that if you write code too fast, you don't write it well. So the thing of doing, oh, this has to be fast, and yeah, if you don't give it a thought, if you don't, like this review instance, of course it takes time, but it means the the end result is better. So yeah, don't don't try to be so fast that your code is bad, right? And well, yeah, of course the last conclusion is that do code reviews because they are good. Um, once you choose the good way, they are going to be good for you. Question. Oh, it's, it's the other mic or something? Uh, no? Uh, at the beginning you mentioned uh, the Ubuntu. Yes. Uh, is it available to uh, regular people or is it just uh, in Russian? It's not available, but as I said, there's, like, the part that's not available are tools that wouldn't be relevant. Anything that we consider is useful, we publish it as a patch for your Ubuntu. So we don't have software that could be useful for external people, uh, that it's ours. Just internal configuration management. So. Hello, Brian. Uh, do you use in Google some automated way uh, for running the integration tests? Or is it bound to carry it, or is it like assumption for even before the contribution that uh, the contributor should run it? Or oh well, yes. Uh, I'm not sure how much I can say of that, but yes, there is a tool, <laughs> and uh, it's it's not only run by the submitter. So there is a system that tells you the health of the code. Uh, there's a question like us there. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, how long to take uh, from submit to approve the code? 
It, it depends a lot. Uh, it depends a lot on the time zone. So sometimes we work with people in the different time zone, and in that case, it might take. Uh, so if you are in a completely different time zone, it might be that I send you something and you reply, and I only see it the next day. So then it can take longer. But if we are in the same time zone, it's probably in the same day, unless you are asking me for like completely refactor everything I did, it's usually in the same day. Um, uh, you mentioned that you require only one reviewer. Uh, would that be a problem that they would be making some pairs who would be friendly to each other <laughs> and you know, doing the same mistakes and not having some other feedback? How do you deal with it? Do you mix the, do you mix the reviewers or is there some... Well, yeah, okay. So it would be possible for people to kind of gain the system and always get the same reviewers, but I think we don't do it because, I don't know, it's common sense. It's like you said, if you do that, you will always make the same mistakes. So it's good to have uh, some, uh, not to always keep the same reviewers, but it's just common sense. There's no automated tool that tells you you've used this reviewer the last 10 times, you have to choose someone else. Uh, you, know, you mentioned uh, one team, for example, Gmail team. How many people in this team are allowed to do code reviews? Uh, no, everyone, everyone is allowed to do code reviews, but uh, you mean how many people are the owner? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It depends on the team. It depends on how the team uh, sets the permissions. Of. So, you can have different owners for different directories. So you have like one directory that has, I don't know, security issues and only very few people have access to that. And then you may have another directory which is I don't know, images. And so many people can contribute images. Like it, it depends on on each part and the team decides who they want to have as owners of each of those parts. So do you use some some company wide uh, tool or do you request uh, code review code review from, for example by mail or no, well, we do use a tool which, as I said, uh, so the Ritfeld tool was based on the tool that we use internally. It was based on that tool like two or three years ago, so they have diverged quite a lot by now. But yeah, there's a tool that, uh, well, the tool actually sends you an email said, telling you you have a code review request, go click here to go see it. <laughs> and then most of it is done through the web. What kind of version system do you use in Google? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, well known that we use Perforce. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Well, thank you very much.